Hey everyone, today we're going to do a digital walkthrough. And you'll recall we did a digital walkthrough in the past a few times. And unfortunately, just kind of uh, haven't done one for a while. Nonetheless, the, the digital walkthrough is using a 3D model that is generated by 3D scanning an actual heart specimen and then loading it into our software called Cardioscape, which is freely available for everyone at www.learnchd.com. Once again, that's www.learnchd.com, and there'll be a link in the description. Remember, this is a completely free software for Mac and for Windows, and it come, will come preloaded with over 100 specimens um, and 3D models of them that you can actually go through. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of look at one of the hearts that we've scanned and got loaded. And one that I'm really excited about is a, is a double outlet right ventricle. So we'll go ahead and find it. And here it is. This is number 332 in our collection. And it'll take a moment to load here. And you'll see we actually have two views of this heart. And so we'll start off with the the view up top here. I'll go ahead and turn this bottom one off. So we'll start off with this view and apologize while I rotate this. Here we go. So here's the anterior surface of the heart here. The anterior wall has been opened up now to expose the right ventricle here. We see a ventricle that has pretty coarse trabeculations. And we do find a septomarginal trabeculation here, consistent with a morphologic right ventricle. And immediately we find that there is an intraventricular communication here. And this intraventricular communication seems to have completely muscular borders. So a muscular intraventricular communication. And as we look at the egress from this ventricle, we see that there's a more anterior vessel here that arises from the morphologic right ventricle. Here is one of the arterial valves. And then here's one of the great vessels. And we can see that this great vessel is in fact the aorta. Here's the ascending aorta, transverse arch, and then descending aorta here. So this is the aortic valve. This is the ascending aorta. And we see that in fact the aorta is arising from the right ventricle. And then right next to it, or close to it I should say here, is the pulmonary outflow tract. And unfortunately could not expose this specimen during the scan to really demonstrate that. But if we look, we can see here is the aortic outflow. Here's the pulmonary outflow, both arising from the right ventricle in its entirety. So this is double outlet right ventricle. And here is the VSD, which is actually remote from both the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So this is double outlet right ventricle with a non-committed intraventricular communication. And then when we look at this relationship between the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, we can see that the aorta is slightly anterior and leftward to the pulmonary trunk. Now we can actually get a view from the left here as well. So here is the ventricular septum from the left side. You can see that the, that the LV is significantly smoother and doesn't have those coarse trabeculations. Here's an atrioventricular valve that doesn't have any connections to the ventricular septum consistent with the morphologic mitral valve. And here are the papillary muscles here. And then when you look out, you can see the intraventricular communication here, which serves as the only egress from the left ventricle. So once again, here's the mitral valve. Here's the left ventricle. Here's the only egress from the left ventricle, which is this non-committed VSD. So double outlet right ventricle with a non-committed intraventricular communication. Now let's take a look at this other view of the same heart. Now this heart has been 
open so that we can actually see the right atrium as well. So here's the right atrium opened up and you can see pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the appendage consistent with a morphologic right atrium. Here is the oval fossa right here and you can see that there in fact is a defect in the oval fossa, not very large. So there is an oval fossa intraatrial communication. Here is the tendon of Totoro. And then here is the mouth of the coronary sinus. And then here is the right atrioventricular junction. We know this is a tricuspid valve. So we can see it has direct connections to the ventricular septum. And remember, bounded by the tendon of Totoro, the mouth of the coronary sinus, and the right-sided atrioventricular uh, junction is the triangle of cock. And at the apex of the triangle of cock is where we would expect the atrioventricular node to live. So in this heart, we would expect the atrioventricular node to live here. Here's the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Here's that coarsely trabeculated ventricle, which we've previously identified as being a right ventricle. Here's the septomarginal trabeculation. And here's that intraventricular communication now seen from a slightly different angle. And here's the pulmonary outflow tract here. And with the way the heart lies, you can no longer see the aortic outflow tract in this view. So a heart with double outlet right ventricle and a non-committed intraventricular communication with both the aorta and pulmonary trunk arising in entirety from the right ventricle.